One of the features of higher mathematics is our focus shifts from finding a solution to being able to say something about the solution, whether or not we can actually find it. And one of the first places we see that is in what's called the discriminant of a quadratic equation. This is part of a much larger topic known in mathematics as the theory of equations. And so one place to begin with is with the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula allows us to solve any quadratic equation. However, not all solutions are created equal. For example, let's consider this equation x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. We'll use the quadratic formula. We'll check the fine print. The quadratic formula only works when we have equation equals 0 which we do. a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant term, so that gives us a, b, and c equal to. And we'll do a bunch of simplifications and calculations. So first we'll replace a with 1, b with 2, and c with negative 5. And then we'll do a bunch of computations. Now it's useful to remember that this plus minus symbol here means that we're either going to add the square root of 24 or we'll subtract the square root of 24. And it's convenient to rewrite this as two solutions. And let's take one more step, which will prepare us for something we're going to do a little bit later on. We have a fraction where the numerator is a sum or a difference, and that means we can split this apart into two fractions. So our first fraction, negative 2 plus square root of 24, the whole thing over 2, becomes negative 2 over 2 plus square root 24 over 2. And likewise, our second fraction can also be split up. And we can simplify this a little bit. This minus 2 over 2 is just negative 1. And so we get our final two solutions. Well, that was fun. Let's do another one. How about x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0? So again, we'll pull in our quadratic formula a is our coefficient of x squared, that's 1, b is our coefficient of x, that's minus 6, c is our constant term, that's 9. We'll drop those into the quadratic formula. We'll simplify. And again, we'll split our fraction into two fractions. And we get our solutions, x equals 3 or x equals 3. Now, an ordinary person would say that this equation has one solution, x equal to 3. But a mathematician is not an ordinary person. We say this equation has two solutions, they just happen to be the same. And as we'll see, there is a good reason for saying that this equation has two solutions that are the same. How about this equation, x squared minus 4x plus 8? So again, we'll use our quadratic formula a is the coefficient of x squared, that's 1, b is the coefficient of x, that's negative 4, and c is the constant term, that's 8. We'll drop those into the quadratic formula. We'll do a little bit of arithmetic. We'll take the square root of negative 6, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You can't take the square root of a negative number. At least not yet. A little later on we'll see what we can do with this, but for right now the important thing to observe here is that the quadratic formula gives us no real solution. So let's take a moment and look at what we have. The equation ax squared plus bx plus c can be solved using the quadratic formula, but there are three possibilities. First, we might get two solutions that are different. Second, we might get two solutions that are actually the same number. And finally, we might get no real solutions. Now, why does that happen? Let's take a look at our solutions in more detail. When the quadratic formula gave us two distinct solutions, when we took the square root, we were taking the square root of a positive number. 
On the other hand, when the quadratic formula gave us two solutions that were the same thing, we were taking the square root of 0. And when the quadratic formula didn't work at all, we were taking the square root of a negative number. And so that says that this thing inside the square root is going to be important. So if b squared minus 4ac is positive, then there's going to be two distinct real solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then there are two equal real solutions. A normal person would say there is one real solution, but mathematicians aren't normal people. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, there are going to be no real solutions. Put together, this says that this value of b squared minus 4ac seems to be important. So let's give it a name. We'll call it the discriminant. And so the discriminant of the quadratic expression ax squared plus bx plus c is the value b squared minus 4ac. One useful thing to keep in mind is that we're only looking for the discriminant and something about the real solutions to 3x squared minus 7x plus 8. Wait a minute. This isn't an equation. There's no equals. So let's go ahead and put an equals in so we can talk about solutions to the equation. Now, since we're not actually looking for the solutions, but we do want to describe them, it's sufficient to find the discriminant. So let's return our definition. A b and c have the same meaning that they have for the quadratic formula, so we'll substitute in those values. We do a little arithmetic, and we find the value of the discriminant is negative 47. The reason the discriminant is important is because in the quadratic formula, we'll be taking the square root of the discriminant. In this case, the discriminant is negative, and since we can't take the square root of a negative number, we say that there are no real solutions. We can actually go a little bit farther. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, we can actually take a square root. But if it's not a perfect square, then the square root will not be rational. And so our solutions, based on the quadratic formula, will not be rational numbers. So knowledge is power. Let's say as much as we can about the real solutions to 3x squared minus 3x minus 20 equal to 0. So we'll find our discriminant. Again, a is the coefficient of x squared. That's 3 b is the coefficient of x, negative 3, c is our constant, negative 20. We'll substitute those into our discriminant formula. So we find our discriminant is positive, and if our discriminant is positive, then there are two distinct real solutions. The second thing to recognize is that 249 is not a perfect square. So when we take the square root in the quadratic formula, we'll end up with an irrational number, and our two solutions will also be irrational.